I want to start with a sincere uh, congrats on the movie. I thought you did a great job with the material. Thank you so much. Sir. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all the bad boys in your background. <laughs> it's all for you. I said the subject. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I like throwing a curve at the beginning. Uh, if someone has actually never seen anything you've directed before, what is the first thing you want them watching and why? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, the contradiction thing in my work is probably that I'm educated as a screenwriter. You know, I should be a huge fan of imagination. And yet my own imagination seems to be the most boring thing I can think of. I am obsessed with the world around me. I'm obsessed at looking at details in, in the world that I live in and try to find ways to tell stories that can learn us something about living a human life in this world. And that, that has been my, my, my project ever since film school. I remember when I started as a screenwriter, I remember thinking that the best dialogue I could find was from documentaries. And that, <laughs> that kind of states it perfectly. Um, I, um, I, I need reality, like naturalism, not classic European social realism, but naturalism seems to be the engine uh, in my work. Before I get into talking about The Good Nurse, I am a huge fan of Mindhunter. Uh, I think it's the best thing Netflix has ever made. Uh, I just love that series. Um, can you just talk a little bit about being part of it and getting to work on such a special series? Oh, I was so blessed. I was a trained a screenwriter. I'd never been on a film set before I directed my first film. Um, and, and I was used to shooting in a very Scandinavian dogma way with a handheld camera where we would just throw it around. And then suddenly Fincher, uh, a big hero of mine, called me and asked me to join him on Mindhunter. And... Um, I saw it as an opportunity to 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 go back to film school, and you know really learn from the best. Um, so I went over, and part of me going over was to direct two episodes, but also follow uh, David Fincher on one of his episodes. And I was able to sit there and take notes and make drawings of how he placed the camera and how that whole thing worked. And I truly learned a lot from it um, on many levels. And also I learned how to be able to focus on a big American uh, set instead of these small Scandinavian sets I was used to. So I, I owe uh, David and Mindhunter a lot and it was a pleasure to work on it. Yeah, I mean, what's funny is how many people would pay to be in that situation to watch Fincher work up close. I know, I, I, I felt blessed and, and I sat there, you know, I, I had no idea how to block a scene back then. So I would sit in the hotel room at night you know, just making drawings and trying to understand the logic of why and how the camera and the the actor, what that relationship was like. Um, and, and slowly, slowly that craft grew on me. Uh, jumping into why I get to talk to you. One of the things that's interesting is that in the film, you never explain or try to explain Charlie's motivations. You're it's it's you know, it's from Jessica's point of view. Um, and it's unusual because, you know, most Hollywood movies are always trying to offer more and get into the weeds. Um, can you sort of talk about why you didn't want to show that? Because I, I personally think you made the right call. Well, thank you. And, and, and listen, I think that you and I, as human beings, we have a need to bring order into chaos and to try to understand the unexplainable. Um, but it is unexplainable. And I don't think that any reason would have made sense. I don't think that anything Charlie could say would actually be believable. I don't think that there is one good reason that he did this. Um, clearly, it's a very uh, damaged human being that ends up doing something this evil. No doubt. The question for me that I found interesting was not about Charlie. It was about how the system allowed this to happen year after year. I think that was the big question mark that needed to be raised, not trying to be find a fascinating reason for Charlie to do this but how and why did the system not stop him? Yeah, it, watching the film, I got very angry because the worst part is, you know, this is probably still happening. Uh, people that are should not be in positions like that are probably still there because of, you know, the American healthcare system. Well, I wouldn't even only blame it on the American healthcare system. I'd say I'm from, I'm from Denmark and we have a totally different system. And, and yet the systems that we build also seem to turn against us and forget its humanity in some way to try to protect itself. And, um, and, 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 I, and that's the whole reason to make this film is to remind everybody of the responsibility we as individuals carry in these systems. We need to speak up, we need to take action like Amy did, and we need to believe in the value of humanity, even though 
uh, uh, the systems uh, seems inhumane. I love talking to directors about the editing room and the editing process because obviously it's where it comes together. So how did this film possibly change in the editing room based on any friends and family screenings or early screenings? My One of my best friends, Adam Nilsson, the editor of this film as well, um, and I, we've been working together for the last 15 years, and um, I was lucky enough to bring all the material home. Um, so we sat in my office in Copenhagen and edited this film um, far away from anybody and had the time and was giving the time to find the story that or to refine uh, uh, the story that we wanted to tell. I think what most struck me was that the less of Charlie's darkness we showed, the darker he became. And that was an, ex an, an interesting journey in, 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 in Eddie's portray. Um, the opening was a little different. There was a little more to it in the planning and in the way we shot it. But we ended up deciding just opening on that zoom in on Eddie, like not really knowing what was going on, clearly inspired by uh, the opening shot of The Verdict where Paul Newman is, is playing pinball machine. Uh, and slowly the camera is just moving in and we're realizing, oh, we have to look at this guy. We don't know why yet, but he's going to be an important part of this story. Um, and, and, and that allowed us to, we were interested in Charlie at the point, but that allowed us to not focus on his darkness, but focus on him solely as the friend that Amy really needed. And that became even clearer in, in, in the edit. I read that you shot a lot of stuff in order. Um, why was that important to you uh, to, to do that? You know, I think the, the, the actors here are clearly great. They can do anything. Um, but yet, um, the logic of this story was like, there was two parts. One was the part where Amy didn't know that Charlie was a killer and was a friend. And then there was a second part where she knew. And the question was, how would she deal with that? And uh, what we did was we, we, we shot the first half almost in sequence, and then we would shoot the next half almost in in sequence. Uh, not completely, because of COVID, we had to shoot out some locations. But uh, nevertheless, it was important for me so that both I, the cinematographer, the way we shot the movie, and the actors completely understood the logic of what was going on in front of us. Um, what we would do was we would increase the amount of close-ups and we would go closer and closer as we got into the part where Amy knows that Charlie's the killer. And we would be more observant in an arm's length um, in, in, in the part where she didn't know. So the whole way we shot it was kind of dictated on where we were in the story. And the only way to really do that was to try to keep it uh, in sequence. On that note, I need to stop. I'm just gonna say congrats on the movie. And I look forward to whatever you're doing next. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, sir.